One, two, three, go. Yes. For the dark places of the earth are full of what? Hounds of cruelty. King James Version just gave us King James Version. I like the King James brings it out. Are we there? Uh, let's read. Look at it. Yes. Full of habitations. They are full of habitations. Full of habitations. What does the word full mean? It means that there is no space. It is full. If you are seeking for a better space for you or for yourself, know that there is no space. Matter of fact, you need to understand that when Isaac dug the wells, the Philistines came and filled the wells again. Do you know that story? That a time came whereby when they dug them, by revelation, he called the place Rehoboth. He said that this is the place that God has given to us. There is no place for you in this earth. The only place in the space you have, it is the one you create for yourself. So he's saying here that have respect for the covenant. For this world, this earth, is full of darkness. Darkness. You cannot cry because of darkness. The cure of darkness is light. No shortcut. The cure of darkness is light. And he said that have respect for the covenant. Then there's something about the covenant that makes you prevail in the cruel places of this earth. The dark places. It makes you, it shields you from the effect of it all. What are these things? What are these things? The cure you want, the cure this nation wants, is covenant. What is a covenant? A covenant is a deal between two or more people that is sealed by an oath. All my learned friends that are here know. We have a few learned friends. It's a deal between two or more parties. And that deal is not, not just a deal. It is sealed by an oath. Some of you may ask, why did Jesus die on the cross? In those days in the Hebrew culture, in the Jewish culture, whenever people made covenant, what they did, they took blood from everyone's body. Maybe they pierced the finger and take blood. And they mixed it with wine. So if I'm making a covenant with Brother Mike, I remove a, a part of my blood, put in the wine, yepi anatoa, wine, then we start, then we drink. Then in that very place that we have done our covenant, we have cut our covenant. In that very place, we plant a tree. Trees plant there. Because any person that will fulfill it, fulfilling his place in the covenant, will be hanged on the same tree. That's why Jesus Christ died for you. You were supposed to be hanged because the covenant that was made, it was between you and God. But in the new covenant, the covenant is between God and Jesus, not us. Are you getting it? Now, these were the strengths of covenants. And you see, when God makes a covenant, he does not, one of the protocols of cutting a covenant is that you have to swear in a greater or before a greater person. But because there was no greater person to swear, he swore by himself. So it means that as long as the Lord is there, he will always abide to keep his part in the covenant. He'll always do that. These are times whereby God will not just deal with every believer. He will only summon those that have come to him by covenant. Psalms 50, verse 15. Psalms 50. Let's start from verse Psalms chapter 50. Let's start from verse. Let's start from verse 1. We'll read down to verse 5. I will show you something. The Psalms of Asaph, the mighty God, even the Lord has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down the arrow. Verse 2, verse 2, very quickly. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. Proceed, verse 3. I don't want to go deeper. Our, our God. Yes. Mm. So it means that something will be made. Something will take place. That it will not, God will not find it worth it to withhold himself. He has to come. 
What is this thing that will make God uncomfortable? Will make God come out from where he's seated to come to attend to your matters, the matters of the earth. What is this? Next verse. Yes. Yes. Verse 5. Listen to verse 5, my emphasis. Do you? Gather my saints. It's a call. Gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. There is a gathering that will be made. And that gathering is not for everyone. These are the people that God uses to turn around nations, to shift things, to change generations. These are the people. Because when it comes to matters of covenant, please look up. Just look up. All of us know that in the realms of the spirit, for you to please a spirit, you have to understand the things that please the spirit. You have to understand it. And in the realms of the spirit, we have one thing that always has been a language in that realm. That's the realm of sacrifice. I met a witch. I met a witch. I heard of him, by the way. Here in Nairobi. Here in Nairobi. He spends more time in the mountain, more than many believers. Fasting and praying. Praying to whatever he's praying for. Not to our God. And he said that if I don't do this, I will not have the capacity to please or to appease the spirit that works for me. So he said that even moments whereby I don't even touch my wife for days, for months. Because he has to appease a spirit. He has to please a spirit. There's a law of appeasement. And it's only when a spirit is pleased, that spirit can do whatever you desire. It is only when that spirit is pleased. You are talking about the Holy Spirit. One of the languages about him, one of the things, one of the attributes about him is that that spirit is holy. That holiness, it explains about his personality. And for you to walk in holiness, there is one thing that is behind the scene that you need to acquaint yourself with, and that is sacrifice. Sacrifice from all sides. Not just spiritual sacrifice. There is a dimension of sacrifice that you will have to subscribe to. For a spirit to be pleased by you. He will tell you for the next three months. Don't eat lunch and breakfast. Eat only dinner. So if you don't know the terms of engagement. How will you woo this spirit to serve you? To work for you? How will you woo? So a moment comes brethren. When God begins to unleash certain emphasis. And this emphasis, not many believers will be able to participate. The ones that will participate are only those ones that have gathered, that were gathered. Those that understood the place of covenant and sacrifice. What comes into your mind? Covenant and sacrifice. What comes into your mind? Altar. Altar. Those people that know how to tend their altars. They are the ones that God will seek to do business with. When other believers, other Christians are busy complaining, there are people God is summoning in the spirit now. Because they have understood that they need to pay the price of sacrifice. Watch out. God will instruct you. He can tell you in the next six months, 50% of salary, take it to church. Does he need it? He doesn't need it. But you see, gather my people. Gather my saints together. So are we all saints? Are we all saints? So the first level to me, Peter, those that have made the covenant with me by sacrifice, that is the disclaimer. Not everyone. Not everyone. Let's next pass. Next pass. Yes. Yes. 
look at this. And the heaven shall declare his righteousness. Why does... Why, have you ever asked yourself, why is the heaven so concerned to declare his righteousness? Heavens will only move when the earth moves. Every move of the spirit be, no, did not begin in the heaven. It began here on earth. Do you remember when Jacob saw a, a vision? If you look at the oscillatory motion of those angels, they did not ascend, they, did not, they, they were not descending and ascending. No. They were ascending from earth. And what? Descending. So the first movement was occasioned here. The reason why heavens have not moved on your case is because you don't know how to provoke the heavens from the earth. So the heavens seem silent. God seems like he's a God that wants to disgrace you. You are busy there. Prophecies were made right, good, tangible prophecies. But the heavens have not moved because you are still waiting for God to do. I told you, even if God has spoken about it, it is not guaranteed that he's going to do it. Yeah. He's seeking for alignment. The day you come to alignment to the terms of engagement, he will do it. When he said that he's going to deliver the children of Israel after 400 years, did he come after 400 years? No. no. He came after how many? Is God a liar? No. There was delay. Are you getting this? Are you getting this? Now, there is, there, is, there, is, there is an altar you need to tend to. There is an altar you need to attend. There is a place. There are demands that need, you need to meet for a, a, a spirit to be pleased. You are there busy shouting the Holy Ghost, crying the name of Jesus. You think that the person that shouts the loudest, the man, and shouts, he shouts the highest, Jesus, is going to be saved? No. There is something that people say. It's a scripture. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. We are the righteous. I love that scripture. But we have been misquoting it. If you, if you look at the word name there, in that scripture, is the name authority. <laughs> the question is this. Have you submitted, subscribed to the Lordship? The authority of Jesus. It is only at that time that the same authority becomes a safe place, a safe heaven for you to do business, a safe place for you to undertake your priesthood. It's the safe place. It's not a name. Many people that died in road accidents cried Jesus this morning, but they didn't make it. Say that those that gather in my name. Check well. It's not name. Authority. The authority. You've submitted to the authority. You've allowed God to influence you. You've allowed Jesus to have his ideas with you. You've allowed Jesus to flow through you. You've allowed him to have and use your life as a stage to perform. You have no agenda of your own self. Now, those people are the ones that God says that these are the ones that have made the covenant because you have sacrificed your will. Sacrifice your will. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? What will make us overcome these hard times may not necessarily be prayer. Listen well to instructions. They are idiosyncratic instructions, peculiar, custom made to you. Listen to them. They will see you through. Yeah. They will see you through. Of course, we have the basic instructions, the elementary ones, but there are some that God will begin to give you systematically. He will begin to give you step by step, step by step. And I feel like God is instructing somebody here, Pastor Grace, don't be everywhere. Yeah. Don't be everywhere. Don't be everywhere. When was the last time, if I may ask you, the whole week, Elisha, did you spend a day before him? 
Did you sacrifice anything for him? Maybe you missed out on an emphasis of last week. I have to come to a place whereby I need to understand and know what does this thing mean? What means this thing? It is only when you decide to engage and deal with him that you come, you will come to understand some things. You know, John 3.16 is so, so open to you. That's why you cram it. But if God decides to open to you some corridors in that scripture, you will faint. Uta faint, mommy. You faint. In fact, you will not read the Bible for the next six months. Yeah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish. Jesus, we don't know anything. Sisemu sisome mandiko, soma. Lakini, kile nasema ni kuna serious business ambayo unafaku jingiza na rom takatifu. Umekua average for a long time. If people are praying for one another, imagine, imagine, you led a brother to Christ and this brother prays 30 minutes. And you that led this brother, you pray for five minutes. There's a problem. Look at that. There's a problem. Now, just, just, just wait. Wait. There's a problem. If you're not careful, this person that maybe you led to Jesus, that was supposed to be your son in the faith, maybe, now grows in stature and begins to become maybe a leader, an elder in the spirit. And is the same person that you led to Jesus. He decided to take the business of the spirit very seriously. And I thank God what Mama was teaching about on Wednesday. The power of consistency. In the realms of the spirit, the language is consistency. Show me your consistency and I will show you the level of your sacrifice. Because sacrifice is consistency. We have performance. People are performing. But people are not consistent. And the moments that God will see you are serious, Diana, it is when you are praying and you have no reason to. You have no reason to hold and to match with the Lord. You have no reason. Every situation is contrary, compelling you to match against the Lord. But you choose to stay on the Lord's side. God watches. He watches. He sees. And when time comes for him to raise people that are going to carry weightier matters of the kingdom, you must be among the least. Yeah. By the way, the people that God is going to use this season may not be pastors. Yeah. May not be pastors. If you check all the revivals that took place, none of those people are pastors. Look at the Azusa Street. I've read, I'm a student of history. I love history. The fact that I was sharing with Pastor Grace about the revivals, all the ages, the centuries of the revivals we had. Do you know where we are now? Do you know we are a product of which revival? Some of you don't know. You don't know about it. And I've studied how revivals were shut down. And it will surprise you. Little things. Little, little foxes. They spoiled the vine. Revivals are not stopped. They are not stopped by big things, very small things. And let me tell you, if you lose your spiritual fire, it is hard for you to get it back. Oh my God. There is nothing hard to regain your spiritual fire. Ah, it's hard. Don't lose yours. Kuipata. 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 You seem like you've forgotten. We had so many mighty names in our land. A time came that sons of men arose in this land. People that God used mightily. These people moved with the fire of God. And only small little psychological embraces about the ambition took over. And they began to chase after political seats. Right now, they are fighting to regain their fire. There is no prayer 
means that a spirit that was responsible for the fire was displeased. And the Holy Ghost has one character. He never tells you when he leaves. He never. Akitoka, hakuambia meenda. Uko hapo, miracles are happening. Oh, you do like this, people fall. You are alone. Never measure alignment by power. No. It's the wrong tool of measurement. You don't ev evaluate alignment by power. It's so simple. You evaluate alignment. Very, very simple. You had, and I was, can I give you a scripture? Yes. Matthew 5. From verse 5. Yes. I think like just touching it. My daughter, don't allow the fire of God to leave you. Usikubali. Don't. Keep it. If it goes, you never. You ne it takes the hand of God. I was listening. All of us know that we lost a very a general in our day. Apostle Dr. Jokai. What a mighty man of God. He's the father of the Pentecostal movement in our nation. But there's a time God sent me to honor him. And I went and he prayed for me. It was in a meeting. But there is something I had. A small mistake. It's very small. Very small mistake that costed him. Very small. Let's read Matthew chapter 5. From verse 4. Mimi wapendo ni naogopa mambo ya mungu. Ni naogopa. Mimi siya juwi. The Holy Ghost brings us into that place by his own mercy. Sometimes there are things you cannot seek and seek out, Mike. You can't. There are things he has to give them to you. It was his disciple. For you, it is given to know. So that this one, you cannot seek it. You cannot pray for it. You must be given. This is, a, is an expression of God's mercy to you. And if you check all the miracles Jesus did about opening the eyes of people, the Bible says, that he had mercy on them. So sight is a function of mercy. Let's read. Verse, Matthew chapter 5, verse 4. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Verse 5. Verse 5. Listen to this. The meek, they shall inherit the earth. Next verse. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after uprightness, after alignment, after the will of God. The Bible calls, if that hunger and thirst is there, you are blessed. He calls you blessed. So hunger is a blessing. Thirst is blessedness. Praise be to Jesus. He said that if the hunger is there, the thirst is there for you to know the things of God. The Bible calls you. But do you think material possession is what we call blessing? Now that you are jobless, the Bible has allowed me to call you blessed as long as your hunger and thirst is there. You are blessed. And he says that, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. A feeling is not, is not something that you will explain. The Bible said that when the disciples were up in that room, when they were in one accord, the Holy Ghost filled the house, and tongues of fire were seen that rested upon each and every one of them. The Bible said, and they were filled. No feeling will always come without hunger and thirst. You are empty because your hunger and thirst is wanting. Hunger and thirst. What is this hunger and thirst? All of us are just about to start the week. 
Are you hungry to know his will? Are you hungry to know his mind? Because what we call fulfillment of, de of destiny, it is, obeyed, or, or, is, it is your obedience to those simple instructions. Praise the Lord. Praise be to Jesus. Now, verse 7. Verse 7. Look at this. Verse 7. Okay. Our mid. All right. No. Okay. Don't go there. Now, listen up. Listen to me. Those that will be in command this season are those that have the light. There is no time you'll have light and stay at the back. You must stay in front. You have to stay in front. There are demands that the Holy Ghost will begin to place upon you. Upon you. And be very intentional, deliberate to do. Some of you prepare for some disconnections. Prepare for some delinking. God is delinking you. Just prepare yourself. Because there are, there are people who are hindering the dealings of God. There are things that seek to hinder God's movement. So as long as they stand on God's way, you are bound for delay. So for God to show you mercy, the best thing he can do, he can begin to remove some appetites of those associations just to withdraw some of them. So you find that nowadays you have no morale to have certain sittings. It's because God is bringing you to a place of separation. And if you check, there is nobody that God operated with that he did not separate. For you to go for an operation in the hospital. All of you come in the hospital. You are in the major ward, the majority ward. But wakati operation, una isoletiwa peke yako. Una letwa Asa unanza kudiliwa na madaktari. It's a moment of dealing. And this dealing, you can't pray them away. That's the funny part of it. That's the most, that's the most unfortunate part about it. You can't pray them out. You cannot fast them away. You have to go through these procedures. You must go through them. You know, because your old nature is still fresh. You've been deciding, Pastor, I want to make up my prayer life. But you see, the old nature, your old self hinders that possibility. So for God to help you, he will give you grace. He will come and partner with that deficiency because you've come to the knowledge that this thing, I can't do it without him. So he begin, to, he begin to call you pole pole. Pole pole. When you see a pregnant woman, I saw my wife. There are certain foods, there are certain atmospheres that become so jeopardizing to them. Hawa pendi. Kuna marufu zingine sasa mami. Nyinyi mnajua. Mnaanza kuhepa. Bwana sipiwe. Najua kwa nini? You are in the most delicate and sensitive season in your life. You are carrying a life within you. So you are striving to get the most most, most appropriate environment for the growth of that baby. Because if the mother is okay, the baby is okay. So if the mother is not okay, the baby is not okay. okay. I've had even people that even chase away their husbands. But I'm not saying that you know not here. Yeah, I, I, I had a case. I think we had a case some time back. Take one, Amze. There are people who want to be very close to their husband because of the pregnancy. You wonder why? It is just a moment whereby they need to work out an atmosphere, an environment to make sure that the baby, the baby is growing okay. Now, for you to give birth, because we have so many wombs here that have that EDDs. Your date of delivery is due. But you know what is hindering is prolonging that nini? The labor pains are too much. It's because you don't have the strength to push. And part of the strength you need to push Sometimes that strength will come by God isolating you because there are people who are acting as support systems in your life that you have always run to for strength. 
and they're sabotaging the process of God. So what, what God will do? Uh, there is something, there is something about God. God is not talkative. Yes, sir. Doesn't talk too much. Oh, yeah. Picture it. Just picture it. God is not talkative. Hungry, sana. But I tell you something about him that I've discovered a little knowledge. We'll only talk when you ask him questions. No questions, he will not talk. Have you ever minded to ask God about the demonic pathways in your family that have made certain possibilities manifest? Have you ever asked God about them? You are only there to celebrate Kwetu to Kohivi. All the firstborns must die. Or all the first women in our family, they don't end up in marriage. Have you ever considered to know the priesthood behind that possibility? God will only make it possible for you to know if you seek to press into him to know him. Hata ungea. When you have kids playing outside, they are peaceful, no shoutings. You will assume they are okay. But I can't do it in the because I can do it. Now, you are seeing situations that you don't like and you are still quiet. So God assumes you are enjoying. So he'll allow you to enjoy. So you wonder, how was, why is this that God gives me a burden? There is a burden to seek God more. Could it be the beginning of people God is recruiting in your family that will deal with such predicaments, such patterns. But you see, when he, when he begins to, to, to beckon you to wake up in the night, to contend, just to spend time and wait for him, for you is a disturbance, is a waste of time. You don't even consider. When we call for meetings, for prayers, you are too busy to come. Could it be that God was giving you an opportunity to bargain for the delivery of your family. And I'll tell you something. If there's a season that the enemy will discourage you from gathering with the saints, is this one. He knows that they grew from strength to strength. Each one of them, Each one of them that appeared before the Lord. So he, any, any attempt to appear before the Lord, it must be fought. Yeah. So you are planning to fast and pray? I realize, ah, ah, ni meitiwa chama ya mama. Wanafunga chama ya mwaka. Mwaka wa chama, mani chama ya mwaka. Nambiwa sister, you are the in charge of all the chickens. So, we need your services. You are set aside time. Ah, he is skillful. He is skillful. He is wiser. He is so wise. He knows what he did to stop your great, 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 great grandfather. And he has mastered the patterns of your family. He has mastered you. He has mastered your vulnerability. So whenever God begins to position you to do what is right, to bring salvation and deliverance, he will always come with strategic destruction. Very strategic. Reasonable. There's no need for me to go. Okay, let me do this, God. Please understand. I have to take care of this matter. I will start fasting and praying next week. Maybe that season of fasting and praying was a bargain for your father. But because of your disobedience, the days were cut short. So your one hour could elongate maybe an extra 10 years for him, for Muse. But because of Chama, 10 years were subtracted. Things are still okay. Nothing is happening. The devil is still at bay. Haonekani. But that's when you discover that God begins 
to deal with a person whenever he wants to interfere with the things of a family. He, he has to isolate a person, one man. So count it all joy if God interrupts you. Your interruption with the, with the Lord is the best thing that has ever happened. And never complain. So in the place of prayer, Diana, we don't come to gain. We come to lose. We come to lose. Oh, you came for breakthrough. You came for breakthrough. I'm sorry. Breakthrough is a function of alignment. The last time I checked, seek ye first the kingdom of the Lord. And all what? His ways of doing things, his demands, his will. And everything that pertains to life, he'll cause them to gravitate to your direction, into your life. He said that, seek them. That's the protocol. It has never changed. So you came to God because of breakthrough. What if he doesn't give you, give you breakthrough? He said that, gather my saints. Those that have done what? Made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Those are the people that have decided to follow this God. They have decided not to compare God with other gods because of some things. You, 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 you don't have job. And you're comparing yourself with other gods. You see, the God of sin so gave a job. Then you are trying to tell us that the fact that you don't have a job, it means that you are God, Jehovah. Is questionable. So you are comparing, you are judging the abilities of God just by natural things, a little bit of natural things. You are wrong. You are wrong. If he doesn't give, he still remains to be Jehovah. If he gives or not, a time comes in your life that you say, Lord, I, I, I'm okay. That you heal me or not, I'm okay. You are still my God. Your level, I'll fix it now. Nanda kwa father, ana kuombea. Hey, Jesus. We measure alignment by the presence of hunger and thirst. If the hunger is there, you are healthy. You are blessed. You are healthy and blessed. Don't give God an excuse that God, I can't fast because I'm fast. I'm, I'm doing work from eight to five. Don't give God that excuse. Because when the gathering is called, when the saints are being gathered, it is only those that have come through covenant and sacrifice that will have the priority. Time in Akuja, people are not given things because they prayed. People are given things because of the weight of their sacrifices. Kuna watu hata kufa maskini, hata kufa, unamona zeka nisani, na hajui. They don't know that God swore, swore with the fathers that your generations will never be poor. But they don't know about it. That reality will only come into expression when you find alignment. Not everyone you see will die in sin. Ha! Hapana. <laughs> Kuna mtu alitoa shamba akapea kanisa, akambia Mungu watoto wangu wasiende jehanamu. Na sasa watoto kiwaona wanalala kwa mitaro wamelewa. God makes sure before they leave the stage of this earth, he has to encounter because he's a God of covenant. A sacrifice is wailing. A sacrifice is rising a cry. I make a prayer every day. I make a prayer every day. I may not be the best intercessor. I may not be the best prophet. I may not be the, the best apostle. But I know there is a system I can put in place to secure the lives of my children after I have left the stage of this world. That's covenant. You are called to serve, to serve the babies, the, 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 the young church. You take it lightly. Could be a bargain. For your generations after you. That God will, will once again say. There is a man. There is a woman in this family. And because of the weight of the sacrifice. I will not forget this family.
God wants to activate graces in your life. God wants you to pay the price of sacrifice. He wants you to come off your comfort zone. He wants. It's not about prosperity here. There's no doctrine about it. It's about alignment. Lord, help me. Help me. Help me. Help me, Jesus. Help me. Lord, help me. The earth is full of cruelty. Make that prayer. Just make that prayer. Let's rise up. Psalm 74, verse 20. That's what I'm Thank you. You are doing something. All right. Can we read? Can you read? No. You see, the way you are reading, it means that you have a teaching. 